everyone, welcome to the official Tarzana Comic Con and Film Festival. Today we are talking with award-winning artist and animator, Frank Dietz. Welcome, Frank. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be here. Cool stuff. Um, yeah, I just want to say, I like your the design in the background. Is that a Adiahausen sculpture? <laughs> yeah, this is a... Uh, I'm a huge Harryhausen fan. I have been since, uh, you know, I was probably six years old. Um, before I even knew who he was, I was a fan just from watching his movies. But uh, uh, this is a beautiful um, uh, vinyl uh, sculpture uh, that uh, comes from a company called Star Ace. Uh, it's a Japanese company, and they do these remarkable vinyl kits of uh, Harryhausen characters. Um, I said, I've, I've got about 10 of them. I've got the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms and the, the Emer from 20 Million Miles to Earth and Cyclops and uh, most of the dinosaurs from 1 million years BC. And uh, I was just telling you guys a few minutes ago, I'm still waiting on Mighty Joe Young, who's uh, supposed to arrive uh, sometime, uh, sometime soon, I think. Um, it's a great one because it's him. It's Mighty Joe Young fighting the lions. So he's got like he's got like two lions on his back and he's fighting them and it's very dynamic, you know. So on the on the Tarzan movie um, from Disney, what what did you actually do? Were you like writing or coloring or? Uh, oh no, I was I was a I, I was a cleanup animator. Um, so and what that means is there are there are various stages to and to doing animation, right? Um, you know, once they once the the characters have been designed and approved, that this is like this is what they're going to look like, right? Yeah. Then the animators, uh, the rough animators, these are the guys who these are the real stars. To be honest, these are the guys who really are uh, put the uh, the life into these the characters. So they when they but so when they're drawing, they do it very kind of roughly, like they that's are called rough animators yeah. um so they, they're not they're not drawing perfect lines or anything like that but because it's what's the important thing is for them to get the action of what's happening yeah okay. you know cre create that and make that right okay once they're done with that then they hand it over to the cleanup animators which is what i was and we would be uh, we'd be assigned a, a character right and we would make sure, so, so we basically would draw over the rough animation, make that line perfectly clean because, you know, it's going to be on a 70 foot screen, yeah. right? It's got to look perfect and it's got to look consistent. Like the character, because sometimes you'll have, uh, actually almost all the time, you'll have set uh, like, you know, four or five different rough animators working on the same character and they don't always draw it exactly the same right essentially yeah. the same but not perfectly the same our job one of our jobs was to make sure that the character is consistent from beginning from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie unless the character goes through some major change yeah. in the course of the story right um so uh, so my character the character i was assigned was kala uh yeah. tarzan's yeah. Uh, adopted gorilla mother uh, yeah. who was voiced by um, Glenn Close, actually, uh, in the film. Oh, yeah. And um, so, you know, for months and months and months, that's the character that I would, oh, me and a team, it wasn't just me. It was, it was probably, I don't know, eight, of, eight or nine of us on the team. Yeah. Um, but we would, we would take the rough animator's drawings and, and basically clean, clean them up. That's why it's called cleanup, right? Make yeah. sure that line is perfect. Make sure that the character is consistent. Uh, uh, what we, uh, we what we call on model, meaning that the character is the character. That character, when that drawing is done, is is exactly what is on the model sheet. Um, there's you know there's no okay. variation. Yeah. Um, so it, it's an important job. It's not. Um, uh, I think that the um, the rough animators are the real heroes, though, because they're the ones that really put the life into those characters i remember getting tarzan little golden books <laughs> these are little kid books you know that they yeah. sold in, in stores right and there were tarzan uh, gold key made tarzan comic books and there was a tv there was a tarzan tv series that i yeah. loved and i couldn't miss every week with ron ely and um so i was a huge huge tarzan fan okay and i remember 
when I was working on Hercules and, and they, I first heard that they were gonna, that Tarzan was one of the movies that was going to be coming up. Oh, I lobbied for that, man. I was just like, please, please, I wanna work on Tarzan. You know, it's, it's like my dream come true, honestly, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and thankfully, uh, you know, I did I did get that and and got to work on a character that I I loved. I loved Kala. You know, yeah. there was there was something so magical about about her. Um, and you know, got to really in, in, in put in some real emotion. Um, you know, in certain scenes when she when Tarzan comes out of the treehouse and he's dressed in his father's clothes. Oh yeah, I just that moment. Paula is just, you know, she's she's got so many emotions going on, you yeah. know, because she, she knows now she knows this has so to alive. happen. Yeah. And uh, I remember working on that scene and just like knowing that this was going to this was this was working. You know, this was really mm -hmm. working. It sounds very interesting. I mean, especially from the people from from the side, you know, uh, the, the animation aspect sounds very interesting because Normally, the public just go and view the movie once, you know, in a cinema for the first time. You see the final product. But, I mean, you guys and, you know, other people is working, like, you know, it's a whole process of, of getting the whole story and characters, you know, up to a point when it's like, this is this is final, this is in the can. Yeah, and, and you know, we we get we get shown the, the movie um, called Story Reels, um, periodically while we're making the movie right we get to see okay. like now so they'll show us the, the whole movie although parts of it will be finished and colored and parts of it will still be just rough rough pencil you know and so forth and movies okay. especially animated movies as as the as the uh, process goes along the movie can change a lot um yeah. so there were there were three or four different endings uh, of Tarzan that I that I saw before they settled on the on the the final one, I I think of all the characters I worked on, Kala's number number one, um, and Audrey is in very close number two. I love both of those characters so much. Um, and what's funny though is, you know, when I do conventions and you know personal appearances and things like that, um, to talk about all the things that I've done in in this movie industry. Um, uh, you know, I, I, of course I talk about the Disney movies a lot and I talk about how much I love Kala and I love, you know, Audrey, but you know, the character that is, is the most popular of all the ones that I worked on is it's a character who's only on screen for, a, you know, not a, maybe a minute tops okay. and it's ba baby Pegasus in Hercules. Oh, Everybody <laughs> loves when I when I sign you know photos you know for people right I swear I swear to you like yeah you know pe people will get Audrey and people will get Kala but the one that that everybody wants is yeah, baby, baby Pegasus <laughs> you see now Tarzan you know most of the time when you see artists depict Tarzan it's all pretty similar right yeah, you know yeah. it, it, there's a basic basic look um, to Tarzan, it's the you know the the long hair and the loincloth, and you know, yeah. and that's pretty much it, right? You know, you yeah, certainly yeah, know, <laughs> having you know played him, but yeah. um, uh, uh, but Deja Taurus um, and the characters from you know all of the, the John Carter stories, there's a lot, there's a lot of different interpretations of you know what they look like. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. You know, I I really love that. So it's like my my Deja Taurus, you know, doesn't look anything like you know Bernie Wrightson's did or Joe Jusco did or you know all these yeah, other yeah. wonderful artists that have uh, also uh, you know uh, felt compelled to to draw you know those yeah, characters yeah. because they're just so wonderful. You know? Do you have any um, advice for uh, for any aspiring animators if they would start out in today's times? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the important thing to remember is that um, even if you're a CG artist, be having a, having a, a a a strong knowledge of human anatomy, uh, animal anatomy. If you're working, you know, if you're 
do uh, um, how how things study how things really move to understand weight because weight is is one of the most important things in making something believable in animation. Okay. Um, a, a great example is when CG was new, right? And uh, you know the guys the guys at, at uh, you know at the Jurassic Island those guys yeah, you know. Yeah. They're, they got it right, like right off the bat. You know, when you see that Brachiosaurus in, in Jurassic Park yeah. walk across that camp, you feel how heavy yeah, that, yeah. that animal is, right? Now, the problem is those guys, you know, were like they had Phil Tippett to, you know, sort of train them, right? Okay. When it comes to that. But there were a lot of other companies that didn't have that uh, luxury. And so if you look at a movie, an early CG movie, like um, Anaconda is one of the ones I point out. Um, Anaconda is a fun movie. It's really, yeah. it's really great. Um, but the animation sucks. <laughs> and the par part of the reason it's, it's bad is because those, those, the guys who animated that snake didn't take into consideration gravity. And so the the snake, you know, this giant giant snake moves like, like so fast, yeah. right? And we, as human beings, most of us have been to the zoo, right? Yeah. Uh, they've you've seen or or you've watched, you know, a nature National Geographic specials or whatever, and you've yeah. seen how elephants move how rhino how rhinoceros moves a hippopotamus right yeah. and you know your brain knows that something that big can't possibly move that fast there's a great uh australian uh giant crocodile movie called oh, yeah. rogue rogue yeah. and that that crocodile it's a cg crocodile mostly i think there might be a practical head uh for some scenes but that that thing looks absolutely real yeah, totally. <laughs> yes. But um, yeah, Frank, we have so many more questions, you know, to ask, and you it seems like a nice guy that can just keep talking and talking. But um, yeah, I think we're gonna come to a close for for now, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we just wanna say thanks a lot for sharing the information. It's all inspiring, and it's so uh, you know, nice to to listen to all your stories of you know everything you did and all the film projects you've been involved in. And um, yeah, we appreciate your time. Oh man, I this has been great fun. Uh, thank thanks for having me on. Yeah, it, it, it looks really nice and interesting, your your kind of work or your job, you know, like, you know, creating different stuff is, is very, you know, colorful. So it's, uh, it looks like you, you, you can never grow old doing what you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I've got Peter Pan syndrome for sure. <laughs> we should all have it. Yeah. Peter Pan. But all right. Thanks a lot, Frank. And um, yeah, thanks for being on the show and we'll chat later again. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, guys. All right, thanks, thanks a lot, lot Frank. Bye. Bye. Bye.